Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a get home kit for your vehicle from a northern perspective up here in Canada. Uh, there seems to be a lot of these get home kit bug out bag videos going around at the moment and I thought I'd jump on board with that being as that's something I'm into and I also want to shout out Prepper Madness who's a prepper up here in Alberta probably the most badass prepper in Alberta um, he's uh, he really knows how to live off grid he's he's got a good setup out there he could stay comfortable in a really cold damn cold winter and uh, he knows how to live off the land he can blacksmith he's pretty cool go check him out I'll leave a link at the end of this video to him and I just wanted to thank him because he's inspired me to make this video because his last video was about something similar. It was a different kind of kit. I'm talking about a get home kit in your vehicle. He's talking about something completely different, but I thought I'd do something along the same lines. So thanks Prepper Madness and go please go check him out if you're into prepping and um, hardcore survival up in the wild Canadian North. All right, so that being said, I have to say that uh, as far as a get home kit for a vehicle goes in my situation, I look at it like this. I do a lot of traveling for work and otherwise, and when I say a lot, I mean about 80,000 kilometers a year, and 90% of the time I'm alone. So that's kind of what my kit revolves around, is me alone on the road a lot, but uh, not an unreasonable distance from home, probably only two to four hundred kilometers at the most at any given time. So let's take a look at what I got going on here. Oh yeah, and I should also mention too that the uh, number one priority up here when I'm considering surviving with a get home kit and vehicle is cold, extreme cold. And in Canada there's two kinds of cold. There's cold, which is, I would say, minus 15 degrees Celsius to minus 30, and then there's damn cold, which I would say is below minus 30 and beyond, and it does get that cold here, and often in the wintertime, so in the summertime, a lot of these things are pointless, and I probably wouldn't take them if I had to, you know, go off on foot or something like that, but, uh, that there's another point too I wanted to make is that when it is really cold out like damn cold or just cold even your best course of action is to stay near your vehicle because your vehicle in and of itself is a shelter it will keep you out of the wind and it will keep you dry if it's snowing hard or if it's raining so with that being said let's take a look at what I've got back here all right I've got the the back opened up here. I've got the, it's got like a thing you can pull over to cover everything, and then you can put other stuff on top. But underneath, I've got what's on top here: a blanket. If you have to spend the night or a couple of nights in your vehicle, you will want that. And then underneath that, I've got warm clothes. I've got cold weather gear. Uh, so I've got, for example, this zip-up hoodie style. Uh, heavy inner fleece lined jacket and right here I've got a wool jacket that would go on over top of that inside this bag and here's another thing if you do need to huff it if you do if you do need to walk because you're within a reasonable walking distance of home then have a bag in your car so that you can throw some of these other things that you might need into it Right now, inside of it, there's uh, uh, windbreakers for top and bottom, uh, raincoat, and a couple of pairs of dry socks that are just in there for, being, for, for storage at the moment. If I was going to have to walk, I would probably take those things out to wear and then uh, fill up the, the rest of the backpack with things that I wanted to carry. I'm not going to take that stuff out because it's a pain. I've only got one hand. All right. Underneath that, see I've got um, rubberized mechanics gloves. I've got an extra hat. 
I've got skidoo gloves for extreme cold. This here is a shovel, a uh, square head shovel. And uh, that's what I would use if I, was, if I had a chance. If I got stuck in the snow or something like that and I thought I had a chance of getting out, I would be grateful for having that in the back of the vehicle to help me um, get myself out, get yourself maybe uh, free from being high centered on snow or just even digging out your tires so that you can put down some kitty litter or something behind them to uh, get more traction. Now, I don't, don't have any kitty litter in here in the moment. It's something I'm going to have to pick up. Kitty litter is awesome. It works better than sand. Um, it's cheap. Throw it in the back of your car. Dig out the snow. Throw it down. Give you some traction behind your drive wheels. I've also got uh, an extra windshield wiper. Because if you're traveling and there's nothing else wrong with your vehicle, but it's snowing hard or raining hard, and, you, and your windshield wiper gets lost, you're going to want that. Under the shovel here, I've got this, for people who love maps, this is the Canadian Oil Field Gas Plant Atlas, 2010 to 2011. It's a little bit dated, but it's, it serves its purpose well. Uh, why have this kind of an atlas back here? Because this type of atlas, which is going to show the locations of gas plants and uh, well sites, mostly gas plants I think in this case so if we were to open it up and take a look at one of the pages on here if I can find a good one that's not in the mountains so for example here's one near Drumheller you can see all of the major roads major highways and all of these little tiny roads that go off everywhere you see those I don't know if you can maybe I'll zoom in a little Um, those are showing the locations of back roads. So you can see right along here, for example. And they're hooked up with, with uh, range and township roads. So that if you're on a major road trying to get somewhere, and for some reason the road is blocked off or traffic has come to a standstill, this could come in handy to, to help you find uh, a way around. There's so many of these back roads out there that people don't even know about that are mostly used by oil and gas. So there's that. <clears throat> then moving over here, I've got um, some basic car tools that if I get stranded and I can do a little bit of a little bit of work, let me zoom back out again. If I've got the ability to fix it, then I can. I can carry on. Um, if not, I can still survive in here. Uh, this is a 40 piece socket set under this t-shirt which I use as a rag also by the way. I've got some more tools so uh, and a hammer. There's a box cutter here. There's some grips and pliers. Screwdrivers. A metal cutter. Pipe wrench. All right and then sitting underneath that is a generous piece of cardboard. Cardboard is something you're going to want to have when it's damn cold out. So damn cold is minus 30 or lower. You can wire that in front of your radiator if you're driving. It can help keep your car warmer inside and it can help keep your engine operating at a good temperature. And even if you're stopped you, and uh, you're stuck or you're stuck for the night you got a flat, two flats, I don't know, for some reason you can't get going and you've got enough fuel to run your car to keep heat in, you can use that to keep it warmer inside as well. Underneath all of this there's of course the spare tire and all the tools for that. Um, as far as cordage goes, I've got, because I'm a farm boy, I've got about a hundred feet of baler twine here. It's strong, it's durable, it, it can be used a lot. It's uh, not paracord or whatever, but uh, whatever. <clears throat> it works good. And I've also got about 100 feet of thin gauge high tensile wire. Uh, moving over here, there's a first aid kit. It's a pretty good first aid kit too, I might add. It's got um, 
reflective blankets in there as well if you need those when it's really cold. Uh, there's a tarp in here. And if I do have to get up and go or go to the bush for anything, if I need wood, if I need to start walking, these are some of the tools I might take. So I've got a chopper or a machete. I've got uh, a folding handsaw and a pretty decent knife I got from Canadian Tire for about 15 bucks. Paracord wrapped handle. And then there's this flashlight. I love this thing. It's another $15 find. Um, it's pretty bright. I don't know what the lumens are or whatever. It doesn't have conventional batteries in it. It's got a lithium ion battery inside. You can unscrew this cap and you can charge it with a USB right here in the car. And uh, failing that, you've got uh, what you can see on here, solar panels. So you can leave this in the dash or you can put it outside if you're on the go and it will charge from the sun as well. It's pretty neat. Uh, what else? See, I've got more warm coats back there and it looks like booster cables. And I think that's it for back here. Let's move up a bit now. So into the back seat. I've got more jackets and stuff there. That uh, has got nothing to do with this. This is just all my karate gear, uniforms and sparring equipment and stuff. Um, there's this panel on the floor. And in there I've got two Gatorade bottles filled up with tap water. That might become problematic in the winter time. I probably would only keep them three quarters full because they're just gonna freeze solid and I don't want to destroy the container. But uh, at least if you have if you have ice, you could thaw it out. There's another container on the other side, another floor um, container over there that's got some toilet paper in it. And um, I would probably, I don't have any food in here, but if I was gonna put it in there, I'd put it over on that side. You know, some power bars, maybe some peanut butter, whatever. Then on to the front. Here we go. The messy front. So, I usually have, I'm a coffee junkie, so I've got um, coffee going on in here all the time. I've always got a hot drink ready to go when I'm on the road. Um, so that is important too, if you're stuck somewhere to have hot liquid going in you, keep you warm. There's my cell phone, which I usually keep in the car. It's, it's in the car 90% of the time. I'm not a big fan of being connected to the internet 100% uh, of the time. It just stays here, so if you ever try and send me a text message, I probably won't reply within 8 to 10 hours, because that's when I would check it. So that should be always fully charged. Um, let's see here. Oh. Some Timmy's, eh? <laughs> uh, we got a charging cable that plugs into your power port. And I got a spare just in case. And that can be used for the flashlight, it can be used for the phone, it can, and a couple other things I got here too. Now in here, uh, I've got a comb just in case I need to tidy up my beard for an important business meeting. All right, uh, we've got a Ziploc bag full of tea candle, tea light candles. Tea light candles, I keep those in case um, for some reason you don't have enough fuel or your engine won't start. You can still keep the inside of your car warm if you put a few of those around. If you're dressed warm and you're under a blanket when it's damn cold out, that will save your life. Uh, this is just a tool for measuring voltage coming from your alternator. You can just plug it straight into your power outlet. I've got some fishing stuff here. I don't have any line. I guess I better add some. This is a spare charger. Plugs into the power outlets in the car. Uh, 
I've got a pack of Bic lighters. Never have too many Bic lighters. There's a multi-tool, a cheap one that I got from the co-op. Probably cost me about eight bucks. There's another flashlight. This one runs on AA batteries. Um, I just threw it in here. I saw it on sale for four dollars or something, so I bought it. It's uh, aluminum, and it's got this on the very end a magnetic tip that if you press on it a certain way, I just can't do it with one hand right now. It, uh, it's like a telescopic, like you know how those old antennas used to be that you'd pull out from your TV or your radio or whatever, kind of like that, but it's got a big heavy duty magnet on the end so you can pick up things if you lose them. Um, it's not my first choice for the flashlight, I like the other, the other one better. And if I had to raid this thing for batteries, I would take them out of here instead of uh, using it up. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got uh, now this lighter doesn't work anymore, but it's just wrapped in uh, gorilla tape. So I got a ton of gorilla tape wrapped on there if I need it for something. I've also got a little bit of electrical tape. I need to put another roll in here. That's always handy. And a couple more AA batteries just in case. I'll show you what I'd use those for since pretty much everything I have in here isn't running on batteries anymore. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? Oh, I've got uh, a thumb drive plugged in and that's just got uh, lots of music and audiobooks and things on it. So if you're bored, you got something to listen to. I've also got this. This is a mapping grade GPS. It's, um, it was quite expensive in its day. I probably bought it back in 2009 or so. And it was several thousand dollars back then. Uh, it's, it would be, I think, a really good tool to have. It's, um, it runs on your two AA batteries. It's got two in there now. I also got two in the flashlight and two spare there if I needed to rely on this thing. Um, there is a way to run it from your car as well with an adapter cable. Uh, this GPS is mapping grade, so I bought it for work purposes, mapping stuff, but uh, I keep it in the car all the time. You can turn this thing on, you can you can pick up GNSS or Navstar, your, your uh, usual US American global positioning system satellites with this. You can also pick up GLONASS, which is a Russian satellite system, and um, Galileo, which is the European Union's set as well. So you've got a lot of options. If one of them goes down, you still got to, you know, for example, if uh, GLONASS goes down, you still got Navstar and, and Galileo, for example. <clears throat> so that's good. It's also got uh, a compass on it, so if you need to find your way, I know I should probably have a, a actual magnetic compass but um, I don't not at the moment this one works really well it, you can also track where you're going with it so if you use it as a compass and you wanted to see your path you could zoom out and see if you're going in circles you can also collect a lot of data with this thing and set it up in, a, in such a way that it's it's very customized so it, it's more than just your um, what do you call it uh, what are those popular ones that are out um, you know, the ones you can buy at Radio Shack for a couple hundred bucks or whatever, it can do a hundred times more things than that. And so that's what I got in here. So yeah, what else do I have? That's about it. So I hope that uh, shed some light on, on what I think or what you should do, what you can keep in your car when you're in Canada. Um, if you have any ideas, throw them in the comments below. See if, if, if you think of anything that I may have missed. I'm always adding or subtracting from this as I see fit. I don't keep detailed notes of what's in here because I just, I'm not that organized. But um, uh, for sure, I keep adding to it as I, as I want. So if you, if you can think of something I should maybe have in here, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for uh, tuning in and watching another prepper-related video by K.
Canadian Arctic Radio.